The Hanover Zoo has a new attraction, where small creatures have made it big. Salamanders, frogs, newts and other amphibians are getting their own palace because they are extremely fascinating and also extremely threatened. We've known about the worldwide amphibian crisis for many years. Currently 41% of all known amphibian species are threatened with extinction. That's primarily because they're especially susceptible to environmental toxins, but also because their habitat is dwindling at a rapid pace. We want to contribute by giving these amphibians space to help conserve these species. It all started in February 2021. The former Mullivap restaurant was to become the amphibian. But how was complicated aquarium technology, ventilation, irrigation and water circulation supposed to fit into a half-timbered barn? We were lucky. Behind the building's beautiful exterior, we discovered steel girders and above them a three and a half meter concrete ceiling. When we made a digital model with everything removed, it was possible to think differently about the space. And then Adrian had this wonderful idea for his octopus shape that everyone fell in love with. An eight-armed shape now structures the new exhibition area. We thought about finding a form that, on the one hand, has a somewhat organic or amphibian-like character and at the same time binds everything together as an exhibition. The arms of the octopus connect, but also create niches in which you can observe the animals away from crowds and dive deeper into a topic. The walls have a certain volume to accommodate all the technology and the aquariums and terrariums. And at the same time, there is the huge advantage that this type of exhibition allows us to put displays on all four sides of the walls. And there's still a kind of meeting place in the middle where visitors come together again and can then go to the next niche. A modern design that conceals the technology. The colors, too, were carefully chosen. We chose this turquoise tone, which is somewhat muted, because we thought that most visitors will come into the exhibition at the very end of their visit and are by then perhaps a little tired. And this tone just makes you feel a little more awake and fresh. Constructing the octopus from thousands of individual parts was a challenging puzzle for the Schirm Carpentry Workshop. The ceiling construction is a masterpiece of craftsmanship. To make the room more dynamic, the vertical columns that contain the wires and pipes disappear behind slanted beams. The walls are in place. Now the terrarium builders can begin their work. Each module includes one or two pools, all of them unique. The largest and heaviest pool in the exhibition requires a crane. The Titicaca frog tank, two meters high, holds 3,000 liters of water. For sustainability, the artificial rock was first installed into the welded steel tank. Then the special acrylic glass pane was assembled. It had to fit into the frame with extreme precision. And then the whole tank was moved into the amphibian house, tons of weight positioned to the exact millimeter. That was the most nerve-wracking. The biggest fear when you design something like this is whether it will actually fit. Of course, you measure everything a thousand times, the height of the door, but then there are the wheels or small bumps in the floor. But everything worked out. It made it in and the floor remained intact. Fitting the gigantic pool into the octopus construction was also a challenge. Once it's in place, there's no moving it again. The basin weighing several tons, I think five or even six tons, is now installed. Meanwhile, construction work in the greenhouse was also underway. A walk-in frog terrarium was taking shape in a former children's ball pit. The exhibition organizers traveled to a quarry in the Eiffel region in western Germany where they collected six tons of stones for the miniature rainforest house. A lot of sweat and dust for the little frogs. 
Especially in this room, which is supposed to be a 24 square meter biotope, it was particularly important to me that we use natural materials. Not so much for the animals as for the plants, so that the whole thing has a kind of natural structure with crevices and lava stones, which are good for the plants and especially their roots. So overall we have the chance to recreate a biotope that then functions more sustainably. A waterfall made of artificial rock. A construction of styrofoam, wire mesh and lots of sprayed concrete. Small pools and plantings create a habitat for the foot-flagging frogs from Borneo. A dozen species of amphibians will live here. Each has different requirements in terms of temperature, humidity and their preferred surroundings. A huge effort. That is certainly different to our other enclosures. The animal species there, many mammals, can deal quite well with our northern German climate. That doesn't work at all here. We have to recreate these specific amphibian niches very precisely. That was a complex task. Fire salamanders are black and yellow? Guess again! There are 14 subspecies of the popular amphibian, all of which can be seen in the exhibition, along with the breeder Uwe Seidel. Not only did he build the lifelike replicas of the fire salamanders, he also provides insight into his breeding methods. And the exhibitions also explain what the amphibians don't usually show us. What can this frog do? What is it known for? On every wall, in every module, we present different species, in this case the African clawed frog. We explained that it was used as a pregnancy test in the 1940s. We also tried to link each species with the research personality, in this case with Lancelot Hogben, the inventor of the pregnancy test. The exhibit goes beyond the traditional aquariums and information panels. Videos and even games help visitors to understand the animals better. One game gives people a taste of life as an amphibian researcher, as they learn how to count frogs. We built a soundscape with ten speakers. The visitors learn the different frog calls and then can test whether they can hear the right number. One can recognize six species. I'd say the moor frog sounds almost like a dog. <laughs> the amphibian house is both zoo exhibit and breeding center, and visitors can experience both biotopes with natural pools as well as the breeding facilities. Most of the animals are part of citizen conservation, a network of zoos and private breeders that aims to counteract the extinction crisis through coordinated conservation breeding programs. The work that usually happens behind the scenes is also on display. It was very important to us to give visitors a direct view into what it means to run a modern zoo, to provide animals with appropriate environments in which they can successfully breed in order to help conserve the species. The fire-bellied toad can move into its new home. We're excited to see how the animals and visitors like it. Walking through the exhibition, I have to learn how to find the animals, which are often well camouflaged. And then I have an incredible number of opportunities to find out more. I can set my own pace and decide for myself how much information I want. That makes it quite attractive. There's plenty for children to discover, and at the same time there are lots of points where adults will say, wow, I didn't know that. The Amphibium, a palace for amazing amphibians showing off their fascinating diversity. Because amphibians can do almost everything except fly. <laughs>